Hey guys, Sean here at the Gardner Center. So Sunday is the first day of summer. And at this point, everybody should have their vegetables and annuals planted as we're getting into the, the thick of the growing season now. Um, unfortunately, once we get into that thick part of the growing season, trouble often ensues in the form of insects and diseases or insects and diseases. So what I'm gonna do this week I'm going to share a few pictures that one of our customers emailed to me, some trouble he was having on his vegetable plants. Um, I'm going to go through those through those insects today because they're, they're common and they're happening right now. So I'm going to tell you what they are, how to control them. And there's also a good guy in the mix that people often think is a bad guy. So I'm going to show you him so that you know not to hurt that guy when you see him. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so I'm going to be sharing this week some pictures that uh, Steve, one of our long-term, um, long-term, long-time vegetable gardening customers, sent to me this week that he has going on in his vegetable garden on some of his plants. Um, and just because these are happening on vegetable plants doesn't mean you should tune out if you're just growing flowers, because these pests also occur on flowering plants and other ornamentals. So the very first one we're gonna look at here, and this may look super innocent, but it isn't, because trust me, this guy is up to absolutely no good. This is a white cabbage butterfly. They also call them cabbage whites. They were introduced here from Europe many, many years ago, so thanks for that, guys. Um, these guys cause all sorts of problems, mostly to vegetables in the brassica family. So brassicas are in the mustard family. Um, it includes things like cabbage, kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, you know, um, those leafy greens and those, all those veggies the kids really love, you know, all those guys. So they cause a lot of trouble with them. And you can barely go outside in Connecticut for 10 minutes without seeing one of these guys flitting around. And like I said, it may look innocent, but it isn't because what they do is they lay their eggs underneath the leaves of those cabbage plants and your broccoli and your cauliflower. Um, but they also love petunias and uh, calabricot is the little mini petunias. They love those too. So if you see them flitting around your, your petunia baskets, um, again, not innocent, up to, up to trouble. So these guys lay their eggs on the undersides of the leaves. The little caterpillars hatch and they're the same color green as the leaves and they love to hang out on the ribs of the leaves. So they kind of blend right in. They're really, really tough to see. Um, you'll start noticing irregular holes in the leaves. Um, so if you, even if you don't see the butterfly itself, if you start seeing holes, start looking for those caterpillars under the leaves. If you have a few, it's easy to pick them off. Um, if you have a lot of them, you may want to spray. Um, a spray I really like to use for them is, is here. And you know, we've talked many times before about being smart with our pesticide choices and not using a broad spectrum insecticide that's gonna kill everything. So if you know you have a caterpillar problem, you don't need to use a product that's gonna kill everything. You wanna use a product that's gonna kill caterpillars or, or at least that's gonna kill insects that are chewing on the leaves. So I have here, you know, Captain Jack's, um, which is spinosad, which is a really smart way to get rid of leaf chewing insects. It's a, um, it's a stomach poison. So they have to eat it in order to die. Um, it's not gonna kill, it's not gonna kill things like bees and butterflies and spiders that walk through it or land on it after you use it. Um, it's also the other thing that's really, really great about it, especially since we're gardening so close to Long Island Sound, is this product, even though it's, uh, it's just a stomach poison and it targets really specific insects, after exposure to 12 hours in sunlight, it becomes inert. It is no longer even dangerous to caterpillars or beetles at that point, it becomes a non-issue. So a really responsible way to get rid of um, caterpillars. And I also have BT over here, or a thuricide is a common name for that. And that's actually a bacillus. 
So if you think about it, what it really is, and it acts almost as a stomach poison as well. It's kind of like, you know, if you think about us getting a coli or salmonella, you're basically giving them a, a really bad stomach ailment that they just can't survive through. But again, it's not gonna hurt your bees or your butterflies or your spiders or your insect friends. So white cabbage butterflies controlled with the BT or the Captain Jacks. A good way to prevent those white cabbage butterflies on, on collards and cabbage, broccoli, is to use these um, harvest guard sheets. You can cover them up with this to prevent the, the butterflies from even getting in there. But don't, don't cover them up if you already have the caterpillars because then, you, then you're just locking them in a, in a room with at an all-you-can-eat buffet. Um, and these guys, you know, a, a, a kind of a cool thing about them, you know, the, they're eating all these brassicas in that mustard family. So these guys, as they're eating these plants, they're actually building up mustard oil in their bodies. So birds won't even eat them. Um, it's, you know, isn't nature incredible the way that works? Um, birds won't eat them because they're full of mustard. I mean, can you imagine that? So yeah, white cabbage butterflies, might look pretty but not our friends um next up on the list here i got some real some real pretty ones here these are also from steve's garden these were on his tomatillo plants and these are the larvae of a potato beetle um i think specifically the three-lined potato beetle um this is what they look like before they turn into beetles and they're they're really easy to spot um they typically congregate in groups like you see them here in the picture. And so if you have a few, they're gonna to be together. They're easy to scrape off or rinse off. Um, they love members of the, of the nightshade family, which is the Solanaceae. So that's your potatoes, it's tomatoes, and specifically tomatillos is one of their favorites. Um, these guys can do a lot of damage. They congregate in groups. They're usually easy to spot. They they cover themselves in their own excrement while they're eating to make themselves unappealing to predators. And I, I can imagine that working out well for them. Um, so they, they do that. But, you know, again, they're easy to scrape off or to spray. Again, with the, with the uh, Captain Jacks, which is a stomach poison, they're not going to drop that as soon as you spray them with it. But after they eat it, they will. Um, definitely a good idea to get rid of them because... Their larvae do a lot of damage, but even once they transform into the beetle, they stick around and continue eating the foliage of the plants. So that's the fir our first two pictures here. Um, I'm gonna come back and talk about the other two guys in just a minute, so stay tuned. All right guys, so this next shot is a picture of some aphids on some of Steve's pepper flowers. Um, and you know, aphids in, them, in of themselves don't do a tremendous amount of damage to plants. You can often rinse them off with a hose um, or, or spray them, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second. Um, you have to be particularly careful with aphids when you see them on tomatoes and particularly peppers. Um, they can do a little bit of actual damage to the foliage. They tend to be on the new growth and on the flowers, which will get deformed as they're developing. The main problem with aphids on peppers and tomatoes is they are a carrier and spreader of tobacco mosaic virus. So, you know, like in the same way that we can get Lyme disease from ticks and, um, you know, the bubonic plague from fleas on, on rodents and rabies from bats. So aphids tend to transmit this virus. And unfortunately with viruses, there is no control, there's no spray, there's nothing you can use to get rid of tobacco mosaic virus on your tomatoes or your peppers. The remedy for that is to pull the plant out and throw it away. It's, it's just game over when you get, when you get a virus in a plant, there's, there's no treatment for that. So if you see aphids on your vegetables, you need to get rid of them right away. Um, and like I said, they're out, they're, they're out in full force right now and you want to be checking the tips and the new growth of your of your of your plants um, particularly your peppers right now and they're sometimes tricky to see i like this particular picture because you can see them uh, against the white flower um, but often they're on the leaves and they're the same color as the leaves and you will miss them if you don't pay close attention if you start seeing twisty or curly leaves that's a good indication you have aphids 
flip the leaf over, you're gonna see them. You wanna spray them right away. Um, and for the aphids and small soft-bodied sucking insects like that, we like to use this Organicide Be Safe product. This is, this is nothing but sesame oil, and it's really, really effective against them. It will, it's gonna knock them out within a day or so. And again, it's not gonna hurt your bees, it's not gonna hurt your butterflies, it's not gonna remain poisonous or dangerous after you use it. You can eat your vegetables the same day you sprayed them with this, it's just sesame oil. So it's really a smart thing to use on, on your vegetable plants and your flowering plants, because aphids, just like the caterpillars and the, the the cabbage butterfly that we talked about, aphids are not just specific to vegetable plants. They'll get on your, your ornamentals as well. So the Organicide Be Safe for them. Um, this guy that I want to talk about now is a good guy that a lot of people actually think is a bad guy. Because people come in all the time and they ask for a, a spray to get rid of this. And you don't want to get rid of this guy. He's a good one. Um, this is the, the larval form of a ladybug. And so, you know, the ladybug lays her eggs, and this is what comes out. And these guys hang around for three or four weeks in this form. They look like a little alligator. They're actually really cool. Um, but, you know, people talk about ladybugs being an eating machine. These guys are even more of an eating machine because all the, these guys, every waking minute, they're eating aphids. And they can eat up to 400 aphids during that um, two to three week period that they're, that they're in this larval form. Um, because they're they're storing up energy to turn into something else and i mean that takes quite a bit so if you see these guys you know you don't want to spray them it probably means you have aphids but let them let the aphids and these guys remain because they're going to turn they're going to eat the aphids then they're going to turn into a ladybug and continue to eat the and continue to eat the aphids so let these guys be and again let the kids check these out too because they're really cool um i'm going to come back in just a minute guys and um pitch an idea to you that I think you might like to kind of help us out with our videos as we go through the summer so stay tuned all right guys so one of the things I love so much about being able to do these videos and to present information in this platform is that I'm able to reach a lot of you at once and I know I am because I get comments every day about these videos so thank you um and f thank you for watching them um but what I'd like to do and you know it's tough because I really want to try to address problems as we go through the growing season because there's a lot of them and there's a lot of them that are very common but you know interestingly enough even though i'm surrounded by plants here at the nursery of all of all types we really don't have insect or disease problems here at the nursery because we're not real we're not growing plants here the plants are coming in and they're going out and they're coming in and they're going out so they're not they're not here long enough to develop disease and insect problems you know we get them from time to time and we address them um, but in order to really look at problems that occur seasonally here, we really need to pay attention to the plants that are in the ground in a, for a while. So what I'd really like to ask you guys to do is to feel free to send me via email pictures of problems you're having in your garden. Even if it's a problem you've already figured out. If you're out and about looking and you see some really funky beetles on your cucumber or the spots on the leaves of your hibiscus or anything that catches your eye in the garden that you may want to know more about and um, perhaps know how to fix um, on the on, a, on your email every week when you get my video you're going to see that little contact sean tab down at the bottom click that send me a nice shot or two of your of your issue um, at the very least i'm going to respond to you personally and let you know what it is and um and tell you how to fix it but ideally, I'd love to get a bunch in so that we can talk about these things throughout the season as we go forward so we can all have a little fun and learn together. So guys, send me those pictures of your problems. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye -bye.